I'm here with Peter de Jong, CEO of the Pacific Asia Tourism Association, PATA, based in Bangkok, Thailand, at ITB in Berlin, March 2008. Um, and uh, I just saw Peter in Bangkok back in October and we had a quick chat and wanted to follow up on some of the things that, that are going on in Asia as it relates to travel and tourism. Peter, tell us a little bit. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's going well. It, you know, Asia Pacific doesn't have a problem with numbers. Uh, we are uh, the place where the first time travelers coming from by the millions today, as you know. Uh, our issues are more about harnessing that growth, making sure that the quality of travel and tourism uh, isn't compromised by the numbers of people who uh, are coming to our destination and are going out of our region. So in, in, in both ways, and in both directions, we're growing by leaps and bounds. We'd like to say that we possess the best real estate for travel and tourism. Uh, and as, as wonderful as that is, it also poses challenges of quality control, of preparation, and of sustainability. Um, tell us a little bit some of the uh, the growing destinations that are there. I mean, like you know, there's Vietnam and Laos, and and obviously everyone's talking about India and China. You know, is, is there is there a concern of of you know is the infrastructure ready? And and you know, you talked about climate change and 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 so on. Do you see any issues around that? Oh, sure. I mean, uh, yes, infrastructure issues are, are huge. Um, if you look, for instance, at aviation, um, the, the, the projected growth in aviation alone uh, would outstrip the capability we have today of ha having those aircraft land and process the passengers. So there's the landing strip issues, there's uh, terminal issues, there's just airport issues or absence of airports. But on the other, uh, on the other hand, there's also a huge uh, demand for pilots. We uh, have far too few pilots to fly our planes in Asia Pacific. So the human resource crunch is uh, perhaps, uh, along with the climate change issue, uh, the single most important and challenging um, obstacle in our development. And what, what's PADA doing about this? Are you, are you have programs in place, and and and, and how you how you resource, how you're connecting with the industry? Well, first of all, um, one of our ways to help our members, because we have you know many, many members across all those sectors, governments, tourist boards, airlines, airports, tour operators, hoteliers. We provide our members with the best strategic intelligence for them to make smart decisions for their companies. So we raise the alarm bell when we need to. We cite opportunities when we see them. Uh, we help with crises when they occur. We help with recovery when it's required. So across all those areas of activity, uh, I think we've uh, shown our members that we are an invaluable tool for them to, to maintain a certain equilibrium in their, in their uh, industry. So a tourist board, for instance, will look to us uh, for statistical information or um, intelligence on new products or on new flows of passengers. An airline may look at um, emerging city pairs for them to connect with in terms of new routing. An airport may look at us for um, solar paneling used to um, to energize the uh, the airport. So lots of demands upon us uh, and we have lots of experts to call upon to help solve those. But particularly also we're bringing our members together so they can exchange their best practices, their experiences and learn from one another. So we're, we're a network. Basically we're a network. But it's a, it's a cross-sectoral network of uh, leaders of an industry across a very big region because we, you know, we go cover all of Asia and all of the Pacific. So it's a, it's a huge area of land that we, we pretend to cover. Um, the agenda changes. Our board of directors decides what that should be. And the board is composed of equal numbers of uh, aviation and transportation people and, and accommodation people and tour operators and destination managers. So we, we always get a mix of industry and public sector input to uh, construct our agenda for the future. Um, and, you know, people can get more information at uh, PATA.org, obviously. Um, you know, my blog is about tourism, internet marketing, and, and you're an avid reader, of course. Uh, tell me a little bit, what are you doing in terms of e-commerce and internet to really leverage technology um, as it relates to growing, growing tourism in, in that part of the world? Probably not nearly enough as an association. I mean, we are... Um, the membership-focused travel trade association. I think our members are much better at this than we are, quite frankly. So I know certain um, of our industry members uh, are, are much further advanced in leveraging the e-commerce um, uh, opportunities. 
only to mention your own former um, employers, the Canadian Tourist Commission, you know, uh, are, are quite active in this regard, as are certain other uh, tourist boards and certain other industry players. We probably are, quite frankly, and I'm not proud to say this, but a bit more of a follower of that than a leader in that space. Okay. And, you know, I mean, we're standing in front of the, uh, the sign for the CEO challenge um, end of April of this year, which I think is a very in innovative undertaking to bring in CEOs together <clears throat> or leaders in the industry together to debate issues like climate change in a very select uh, uh, forum and um, you know we'll, as we discussed we're looking to help you out maybe to kind of bring some bloggers in to, to disseminate the content even further and create a debate engagement online you know tell me a little bit what was your vision about the CEO challenge how did it develop and, and how do you want to take this uh, going forward yeah well just as we perhaps are a bit of a follower on the e-commerce platform we certainly want to be a leader and have shown to have become a leader in the climate change issue um, and the way we see it, it is not for us to question the science or to lament you know, the, uh, the plight of the uh, carriers or worry about uh, Davosian declarations. There are other parties in the public sphere or in specific sectors who will debate all that. What we're concerned about is the industry getting on the front foot to address opportunities to reduce its carbon footprint to become more sustainable through the sharing of best practices. We, we simply want to know and communicate the best of what's out there today to reduce our industry's carbon footprint. We know that airlines are doing wonderful things in, for instance, biofuel uh, uh, projects. We want to know what's going on, what it looks like, what the experiences are. We know the resorts are building more sustainable new properties and existing hotels are being retrofitted more appropriately for energy conservation. We want to know in detail what that's about. We know tour operators, because of consumer pressure, are looking, taking a hard look at destinations and how they're managing their environment so that concerned and selective consumers make smart decisions about where they go and where they won't go. So all of that we want to bring together through industry sharing of best practices in a very concrete, measurable, productive, simple fashion by bringing managing directors, directors of sales and marketing, researchers, CEOs of airlines, CEOs of hotel groups, together in one place, in one time, because all of us are looking at it in our respective silos only right now. You know, the aviation sector looks at the aviation issues and the hotel sector at accommodation issues. We want to cross-pollinate all that through uh, bringing together of these uh, examples and adopt them, and adapt them, so that you know, there'll be 20 hoteliers, leaders of small, of big groups, who've learned one new thing from one of their colleagues that they can take home and implement in their company, and suddenly we will have significantly re reduced our carbon footprint. The same for airlines and airports and, and tour operations, for instance. So, very hands-on to get onto the front foot of the issue, because if we don't, the regulators will get to us and they will f enforce things that are not so smart, or they'll tax us in ways that we shouldn't be taxed. So it's all about taking leadership, assuming responsibility, and sharing the best of our ideas. Let me ask you one last question, <clears throat> and, and I think that's great. Uh, I, I recently had a conversation with uh, uh, Professor Jeffrey Lippmann from the uh, World Tourism Organization, and, and obviously he's very passionate about climate change. But he's also very passionate about enabling technology um, and e-tourism. And, you know, could you imagine like a CEO challenge 2009, you know, have a big com component in there as it relates to technology and how technology can enable, you know, the climate change issue or poverty issues or, 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 or evolving tourism in general into the Pacific Asia uh, region? certainly can imagine it, certainly are very open to it. We need a lot of help. We need to bring new expertise in that we, quite frankly, don't have all in our own organization, in our own company. But I'm very, very uh, intrigued by it and committed to exploring it because one of the big things about climate change, for instance, or some of the other overriding issues, is creating awareness in an ever greater community and the connectedness that, for instance, blogs have, like yours and, and other people have in, in their networks, can only be helpful to spread the word and to get more commitment to positive change. So, very open to looking at that and hoping that 09 will be more uh, 
uh, technologically driven than perhaps 08 will be. Great. Thank you so much, Peter. Uh, great seeing you again at, at ITB and I'm looking forward to seeing you in Bangkok at the uh, Pata CEO Challenge. Thanks.